Hello, Mountain View Bible Camp, and welcome again to our Mountain Top Advent series. As we continue reading the book, Love Came Down at Christmas by Sinclair B. Ferguson. Today we pick up on chapter two, Glittering Powers. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 2. This popular press allows you to consult your horoscope. The Bible prophecy is firmly out-fashioned, except that it is at Christmas time. Even if a service of lessons and carols combines readings from Charles Dickens and the like with the book of Genesis, prophet Isaiah is still there. You can't have real Christmas service without prophecy. It's an essential part of his story. In fact, Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus is held together by a whole series of prophecies about his coming. One of the remarkable things about these prophecies is that the baby Jesus could not have engineered their fulfillment. The point is that, through the prophets, God had foretold what would happen. True, most Old Testament prophecy isn't like that. It's not so much foretelling the future as forthtelling God's word for the present. Perhaps that is why Paul links it here with understanding what he calls mysteries, by which he doesn't mean spooky things, but things we cannot understand unless God explains them to us. But in either sense, being able to prophesy is also a big deal in Corinth. It was a prominent spiritual gift. Paul seems to have valued it above all other gifts, even speaking in tongues. But a loveless prophet is nothing. As if that were not enough, Paul adds something else. Mountain-moving faith without love is also nothing. He probably knew Jesus had spoken about this kind of faith. We still use the expression, faith that moves mountains. It is a in picture language, none of the apostles moved mountains to make their journeys easier. They went the long way around, or even by sea. Moving mountains means doing what seems impossible. Likewise, the word faith here doesn't mean simply trusting Jesus. You cannot be a Christian without that kind of faith. But Paul is speaking about a special gift that not everyone had. He had explained this in earlier chapters in 1 Corinthians 12. Mountain moving faith, like making a lame beggar walk or the blind to see, is extraordinary, extra extraordinary. Our instinct is to be in awe of a person who can prophesy or who has mountain moving faith. We tend to assume that anyone who can do that, who can do those things, must be deeply spiritual and marked out for a position of leadership and for a ministry that we should support, perhaps even financially. But there is a problem. Apparently, you can have mountain moving faith and not have love. And if that's true, instead of being someone to be respected, followed and supported, you're nothing. That's no thing, nobody, zero. You should keep a careful watch on people who claim to have spiritual gifts. In particular, you need to watch their lifestyle. You can't afford to be naive. And most of all, you need to avoid the biggest mistake, confusing gifts with grace. They are not the same. Having special gifts, even extraordinary ones, is not a mark of grace. Does that sound like sour grapes on the part of somebody who doesn't have mountain moving faith? It could be, but the fact is, is that 
what Jesus himself said. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Matthew 7, verse 22 and 23. These words are from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, a passage that, he, that has something in common with 1 Corinthians 13. Everybody loves it, but not everybody hears what it's saying. So, what is the point? This, when Christ gives you a gift, it will be a blessing to you. But the gift isn't primarily for you. It is to enable you to express your love for him by serving others. Paul had these gifts in abundance, but whenever he used them, he would say, we are your servants, bond slaves, for Jesus' sake. You may have met people who complain, the church isn't recognizing my gifting, but you probably have never heard anyone complain, the church isn't recognizing my loving. The truth is that if you are focused on looking for opportunities to love, we'll usually find opportunities to use our gifts along the way. The Holy Spirit accompanied Jesus throughout the whole course of his life, from the moment of his conception until his resurrection. Throughout his life, he had the Holy Spirit without measure. And in the face of all the pride and failure of his little disciple band, he never said, you're not recognizing my gifting. Instead, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that yet he had come from God, rose up from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. John 13, verses 3 to 5. Jesus had all prophetic powers. He understood all mysteries and all knowledge. He had mountain-moving faith, but because he loved us, he kept coming down. See him in the upper room, kneeling at the feet of his sinful disciples. Since Judas didn't leave the room until later on, we know that Jesus knelt down and washed the feet of his betrayer. We see this humble love in its perfect form at the first Christmas. The incarnation means that though he was in the form of God, Christ made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. That is what love looks like. That is what love is. And that love came down at Christmas. I want to take a moment to thank you for reading along with us today from the book, Love Came Down at Christmas. We would like to thank the Good Book Company for graciously allowing us to share this book in its entirety with our followers from camp. To purchase a copy of this book for yourself or for a loved one, please go to thegoodbook.com or Amazon the links can be found in the description of these readings that we are sharing with you. If you enjoy this book and want to learn more about the author or further publishings, please like or follow The Good Book Company on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We trust you have a safe, joyful, and wonderful holiday season.